Hello colleagues, 238th day of heroic struggle of Ukraine. Here is Natalia Staroprava and we are about to begin the series of briefings in the Media Center Ukraine. Who we have right now here with us is Anka Feldhusen, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Federal Republic of Germany uh, in Ukraine. Your Majesty, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ukraine and especially Kyiv for the last 10 days are struggling with the uh, mass attacks from the side of Russia. Can you please tell us about the moods in political core of Germany and how does a German um, ambassadors work in Kyiv? Well, the ambassadors as well as the, all the other ambassadors uh, are working exactly in the, in the mode before. And uh, we are working according to our plans and we have uh, different missions and uh, we are staying uh, shoulder by shoulder with Ukrainian society and I truly am impressed by how calmly and especially Kyiv people uh, take this all through and we are trying to take this a, a, as an example and continue our work and how did the work and format and schedules of uh, German of ambassadors working because I know there are several narratives from Russia side in order to create the blackmailing and panic in between political circles. How does it work with you? Well, we were asked and uh, by uh, by other ambassadors whether we work because yes, Russian narratives are in such a way that we kind of escape, but it, this is not true, and these are indeed fake news, and all of the TV channels we are trying to... Miss Anka, do you, do you hear us? Did you hear us? Yes, yes, can I ask you to repeat, please, what you said last? I wanted to say that these are fake news, and we are trying on all the TV channels to show that uh, not only through tweets, not only by presence on all different events as this one, that we are here in Kyiv and we are working. And I want to remind that on the 15th of October, German Chancellor uh, Mr. Scholz urged for widening of European Union. He also remembered about several countries. And what does it mean? Do Ukrainians do are Ukrainians seen in this list of countries? Well, uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz was here in Kyiv in June, and he clearly stated that Germany is completely for Ukraine to be a candidate for EU membership. Nothing changed since that time, and the process this process is clearly written in all in all the rules. And we are simply following them and uh, all these procedures and uh, you know that there will be seven steps that Ukraine is still working on and uh, me uh, together with the Ukrainian government we are hoping that by the end of this year these steps will be implemented and Ukraine will be able to start negotiations with Brussels regarding how to move forward to towards Ukrainian mem uh, EU memberships and more about these steps, you as ambassadors of one of the most powerful countries of European countries, what can you tell about the progress of Ukraine? What steps did Ukraine manage to go through the best and uh, what steps are a little bit slower implemented in Ukraine? Well, all these steps or, or forms uh, we have already uh, been working on and talking about with Ukraine. This is, first of all, the success uh, when it comes to courts and courts reforms. As for me, there is, there is a progress there, and especially with the commission that is choosing a new head of National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, and he has already started to work. And these commissions uh, that are controlling the candidates for membership to the Senior Judgment uh, Council, and they are working. So there is, there is prog progress there, and we are observing for this progress to move on. And we understand that some things are difficult to implement during wartime, but these steps are capable and uh, are, uh, are able to, to do. 
Another question is uh, regarding, for example, this law about de oligarchization. There were some recommendations uh, of the Venice Commission, and there are a little bit of discussion regarding how to change this law. Also, a uh, law about media, and I think that the first uh, project of the law during the first hearings was accepted quite good. And uh, one can continue working uh, in this direction by the time of the second hearing to make this law according to the European standards. All in all, the progress, as for me, really exists, and we are simply following uh, and going further with the government and making sure it will be possible. Germany is one of the countries and one of the biggest countries, if I remember so me right, on the second position that helps Ukraine most. And uh, it is already known that Germany doesn't stop supplying high, high quality weapon systems and the, the weapon systems are the first necessity. We already know that there are some supplies to Ukraine. Does Germany receive reaction from Ukraine, Ukrainian government, Ukrainian soldiers how, about how these weapon systems are being used? We are always glad that there is this kind of feedback. And yesterday, as the Lansky president said by himself that uh, these weapon systems are already in working and uh, these systems help helped to protect Ukraine against Russian rockets and this is indeed very important and we saw these two weeks that the protection uh, against rockets is extremely important these days and other weapon systems we are supplying uh, you can uh, read it uh, every Tuesday on the website of our government, and this is still very, very much, very much weapon system supplied. We increased the number of equipment, for example, uh, armed, armed uh, maintenance and location vehicles. We wanted to supply five of them. We are, we are supplying, in fact, 10 of them and other things as, for example, tents that the soldiers need quite urgently during the winter time. Uh, instead of 100 tents, we are supplying 200 of them and we are trying to look forward to what Ukraine really needs right now and uh, we are trying to, to, to provide it to Ukraine. And one of the aspects that has been forgotten all the time is this is our long and long cooperation with Ukraine in the sphere of medicine and uh, in the sphere of, um, of the medical service of the armed forces of Ukraine. And even before that, we were supplying the field hospital that is working in Ukraine. And right now, another field hospital is being provided to Ukraine. And it is produced in Estonia. And I think that these are extremely important things because these are the things that will have that will save the life of Ukrainian soldiers. Russia, Russia does not stop its propaganda. And besides the fact that it reminds all the time, or let's put it this way, line uh, that the Western weapon systems are being used in Ukraine not according to their purpose. Plus, Russia is uh, blackmailing by means of declining the amount of gas supplied to Ukraine. How does Germany react to this Russian propaganda? Well, uh, we are ignoring this propaganda and uh, our position is the following. We have chosen quite properly that equipment and that weapon systems that Ukraine needs right now. We will provide it to Ukraine and this is, uh, from this moment, Ukrainian weapon systems. And it is up to Ukraine to use it in a way Ukraine wants. Ukraine wants. And by doing this, we trust Ukraine, and uh, and that's it. Regarding the gas, the last numbers, uh, Europe is receiving only seven percent of uh, of the gas through um, of of Russian gas, and our gas chambers are almost one hundred percent filled. And uh, we also declined the usage of Russian gas approximately for 30%. So 
both Germany and both European countries have adapted quite quick to importing less Russian gas. And right now there is almost none of import of Russian gas. And as of right now it is functioning and we all are hoping that this winter uh, not to be so cold. And uh, I, I, I think that we have prepared ourselves quite well. And for Russians, I, I want to remind this, uh, for Russians it will be harder the crossing of the border of European countries and it will be harder for them to receive visa and visa mode regime. What are the moods in Ukraine, in, in Germany right now regarding the Russians and re regarding the Russians in, in Germany? Well, we are talking about this with our partners and there are different approaches to this. Our approach is the following, t is to look at each individual case and then we, we will decide about whether to provide visa to this or that man or not. Because in Germany, as you know, there is uh, a huge minority of Russian-speaking people, we call them diaspora, and I think that, that we are clearly looking at, at the moods there. And we saw quite unpleasant things and demonstrations that we we wanted, we did not want to. And I think that in the future we will continue observing quite intensive movement and how how Russian-speaking diaspora in 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 Germany reacts to this. Indeed, today Ukraine needs a huge help and it receives a huge help from Germany but after after the victory Ukraine will be exactly that very space with unlimited amount of possibilities open doors for Europe how does Germany is looking at these possibilities with Ukraine well it has always been this is my, my main message, because Germany is already working together with Ukraine since 2014 quite, uh, quite strongly. And we are quite close to each other when it comes to different spheres of life. And this gives us an advantage to continue this cooperation, not only when it comes to weapon systems and uh, military cooperation, but also in, in other spheres of life. And we already now are working quite intensively when it comes to power, mm, energy power uh, sphere, because this is also important that will help Ukraine to go through this winter. And this is exactly what will help Ukraine. I'm not yes, yeah, yeah, I'm glad that there is a connection. So what I want us to say is that after the victory of Ukraine, the energy power uh, system of Ukraine will also be more independent and uh, it can be built exactly on, on, on the self, self rebuilding, self um, replenishment systems, uh, sources of power. So Alexei Makeyev, uh, Ukrainian ambassador, flew to Germany, flight to Germany. I know that you have a good contact with him. What would you tell him and what are the messages you gave him while on his way to Berlin? Well, indeed, we had several meetings with him. And before his uh, flight to Germany, we both are looking eye to eye that our cooperation, even though there is some kind of negotiations or disappointments, this cooperation is indeed uh, trustworthy, stable, and uh, for a long time we have been working together quite densely. And both he and me want to continue to, to make these relations even closer and another aspect important here to say is uh, exactly these relations between counties and the cities of Ukraine with counties and cities of Germany and only during uh, just during since uh, February since the beginning of the full-scale aggression there is 70 sister cities uh, instead of 60 before that with Ukraine. And there is a huge interest of German cities to help 
directly to Ukrainian cities and towns. Also, by means of because there is two, there is many Ukrainian IDPs working in these very German cities and towns, and they help them to increase this kind of partnership between the cities. Thank you so much, and I want to uh, remind you that uh, here was Anka Feldhusen with us, Ambassador Extraordinary and uh, Plenty Potentiary of the Federal Republic of Germany and Ukraine. Thank you for this talk. Thank you so much. See you later. And I will see you soon, and we will talk with the head of the Oblast Military Administration.